Have you ever wondered what catches your eye or what triggers you when you're out there doing street photography? So what are you drawn to as a street photographer? Over the years, I noticed that I slowly shifted what I'm drawn to, so my street photography triggers. Those small incremental shifts and developments of new triggers as I got more experience. I believe this is quite a natural process when working with something for a longer or extended period. So to shift and change how you perceive things and what draws you in. I actually started out doing architecture photography and I was always trying to find those odd angles and perspective to add an interesting point of view to something as boring as building architecture. And for a while it was a lot of fun and I still do it from time to time. There's just something so pleasing about leading lines, geometry, that just keeps me coming back. But my past triggers have always pushed me to explore new triggers and figure out what I'm drawn to and just follow my instinct. Let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Ambreen, aka Hipster in Copenhagen. I'm obsessed about street photography and I also have a website where I have a blog with a B and a newsletter and I also have a complete overview of my gear. So check it out, there might be something for you there as well. All right, let's jump back in. So what are street photography triggers? And if you haven't heard about the term before, you're probably wondering what they are. So triggers are something that you naturally and instinctively respond to or drawn to, something that is natural to you and your creative eye. So this of course is individual and differs from one street photographer to the other and how they perceive the world around them. As I mentioned before, my triggers have shifted a lot from the early days of doing street photography and to what I'm drawn to at this very moment. But I have a few distinct triggers that are always present in my street photographs. Let's take a look. My number one trigger is good light. So I really don't like to shoot in dull or flat light. I'm always on the lookout for those pockets of light when I'm out there on the streets. And it's often the first thing that catches my eye. And it makes me curious of how I can play with the light and use it to frame up a shot that makes it interesting for me as a photographer, but also for the viewer. So high contrast and silhouette photography are definitely my triggers. I can do them for days. And this is something that I'm very much drawn to, especially when it's sunny outside. Because I worked on understanding light and what good light is over the years, it's become easier for me to imagine the composition that I want and also the type of subjects that I want to enter the frame. So basically how to frame up a shot. And often I can also imagine the end result after I'm done in post. I recently started to shoot at midday, so basically it's hard or harsh light, and I started also to use the smaller apertures. For me, it's a different way to experiment with light and to use light differently in my photographs. I do a little bit more of backlit photographs now, where I want the light to be the most dominant element, and often I add a subject to keep the photograph interesting. So backlighting gives the overall photographs, in my opinion, a bit of mystery, as the harsh light is kind of dominant and often it's blocking out the subject, so you really don't know what What's going on but it's not that obscure that you really can't tell what's going on so it's an interesting way of using harsh light which most photographers don't like to do when good light triggers you then shadows also triggers you and they come along with the package i personally like how the shadows play and interact with the surroundings the environment but also the subjects Maybe that's why I really like Night Street Photography. I recently made a ultimate Night Street Photography guide. You can check it out if you haven't seen it. Shadows can be very different depending on the light source. So for example, soft light creates that really nice diffused light, which is really flattering if you're doing street portraits. On the other hand, you have hard light that creates those really strong shadows that are really defined and often creates a strong contrast that is cast on the ground. It can be a little bit different to work with hard or strong light and also those really well-defined shadows. But in my opinion, I think it gives that really interesting look to the photograph that is so different than what people often chase with the soft light.
My latest set of triggers are capturing those candid moments. So I believe this has been a natural progression of my street photography triggers. So to be honest, I really didn't even like candid street photography or what some people call classic street photography, where you are basically really close to your subjects to capture those raw intimate photographs with a wider focal length. A long story short, a couple of months ago, I started to go out with my Fuji X100V daily, and I had a 35 millimeter equivalent, and then kind of led me to buy the 28. And from that point on, I started to get obsessed about those candid street moments. And that has been the most radical shift in my street photography triggers. And the reason why I'm so drawn to it is because it makes me so curious of what's happening when I'm out there on the streets. So now I run towards the action and also because I really like to collect those really odd expressions or gestures that are not really something you see often on the streets, but again they are there quite often. And I also try to capture those emotions or interaction between people. So basically trying to capture real human stories. So now I see the beauty in ordinary moments that are easily overlooked, subtle details that are hidden in plain sight. And I've also learned to see the beauty in anything ordinary. In the beginning, I asked what your triggers are and if you know what triggers you. So let's talk about how to find and develop triggers and why they might be important for your street photography development. All right, up first is experiment and explore. So this goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. You have to be out on the streets to be able to capture those opportunities to figure out what triggers you and what really draws you in. So try different shooting techniques, locations to discover what ignites your creative spark. All right, number two is develop your visual vocabulary. So train your eye to see potential photographs in everyday moments and scenes. So the more you train this, the more you are able to anticipate those moments down the line. I believe street photography triggers are important because they help facilitate your personal exploration and developing your own unique set of triggers to keep your street photography fresh and also interesting. And as street photographer, that's what we want, right? You don't need a lot of triggers. One is enough because one trigger will lead to the next trigger and so forth. And this is how my own journey has been for the past eight years. One thing led to the other and often it's a good thing. The only constant in my street photography journey has been change. So change in my street photography skills, shooting style, and now what I'm drawn to, my street photography triggers. So essentially my triggers has evolved based on my experience and progress I made in the past. And now it continues to push me in new directions. All right, I'll see you in the next one.